$99 job postings. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What is happening? It is Tuesday afternoon. It is October 11th. This is Kaplan and Crew. We are in the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. For everybody that is tuning in on the airwaves of 1090 throughout all of Southern California, happy to have everybody here. For everybody that's just now getting onto the stream of YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, get involved in the live chat. It's time to get going, chatlins. So let's do this thing here on YouTube. All the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, iHeart, wherever you're listening on whatever is your preferred platform. Very cool to have you guys here. And tonight, between 7 and 8 p.m., we are on television. It's Channel 4 in San Diego. It's Channel 4 in Santa Barbara. And if you're in Orange County or L.A., it's Channel 118 if you are a Cox or Spectrum Cable subscriber. So you pretty much can't get away from us. We're, we're pretty much everywhere you are. Radio, TV, streaming, audio podcast, you name it, we're there. Grande, Brown Man. There. Yeah. Talk to me today. It is Tuesday. The Padres and the Dodgers tonight. Uh, we were talking yesterday about the projected pitching matchup. Well, the Dodgers have done what I think is the right thing, which is Julio Urias, who's their number one guy. He is the starter tonight against Mike Clevenger of the Padres, who's the Padres' number four guy. I mean, everything tonight says Dodgers. Their home, the emotion, the crowd, the Vin Scully factor, the number one pitcher for the Dodgers, the number four pitcher for the Padres. It's not until you get to Kershaw versus Darvish. I mean, that's really, I mean, your battle. But tonight, everything says Dodgers, except the Padres are hot and the Dodgers have been off. The Padres were peaking at the end of the season. The Dodgers really haven't played a meaningful game in about a month. So the energy is on the side of the Padres coming in. The home crowd and the well-rested part of it is on the side of the Dodgers. Let's get it on. Let's do this. What do you say, man? Yeah, I'm excited. And the best part about this, and I know people have made a, a big deal about like pressure and who the Do the Padres have absolutely zero pressure. All the all the pressures on the Dodgers, which it is. It's true. It's a fact. You win out. You win the six most games in baseball. Like no one's expecting the Padres to beat you. Nobody. Which is fine. It's great. We'll see what happens. But before we get into all that, I think we get caught up in evaluating performances especially me getting up getting down um just being negative because that's how i am but scott you're a you are a lover a fan of stories mm. tonight this is a great story for mike clevenger man like i've been harsh on the guy because he's been so inconsistent but when you really take a step back and talk about the story of mike clevenger in 2020 he starts the first game against the dodgers with like a torn up arm he already needed Tommy John before he took the mound. Goes one inning, has a second rehab, and all year we're like, "What are you going to get from the guy? What are you going to get from the guy?" No one's come back from a tech, second Tommy John surgery and had a good and had a good season. Mm -hmm. Well, did he have a good season? Not necessarily, but he's been there. He's been reliable to give you four to five innings pretty much every single time he's been up to bat and to pitch. Excuse me. And now he takes them out today against the Dodgers in the biggest game of his career and one of the biggest series of the Padres' history. Like. It's an incredible story. I wish him well. I don't really know what to expect, but congratulations, Mike Clevenger, man. Against all odds, against everything I've said about him all year, he gets to go out there and prove us all wrong and see what he got. Two years later. Mm -hmm. Two same years team. later. It is a great same story. Same team, same part of the playoffs. Yeah. Hopefully and, it goes longer than an inning. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you're, and you're at Dodger Stadium against the Dodgers' best pitcher, like I said, against 56,000 people. Uh, the, 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 the crowd, the vibe, the buzz, and you're the number four going up against their number one, two years ago, blew out your arm. This is a great story. Good point, Alex. I'm glad you, cause you're right. I'm as negative as anybody. I mean, my gosh, I have got Padre fans sending me, uh, messages saying, bro, you owe me. I said, oh, you for what? You said the Padres weren't going to make the playoffs. We had a bet going. I'm like, we did. So I've been as negative as anybody. Um, so, hey, listen, I, 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 it's funny because people who are lifelong Padre fans 
are also Dodger haters. I don't find myself in that position. You know how I feel about Dave Roberts, and I followed the Dodgers all season long. And if the Padres win, I'm going to be stoked for the Padres. And if the Dodgers win, I'm going to hope they win it all. But for this series, for right now, and I've said this, and I know I'm getting ripped on Twitter for everybody, that's I would like for San Diego to experience the high of actually something great happening in sports in this town, given how bad the Padres have been for how long they've been bad. And given how the, the the Chargers were ripped from this community, I said it back in 2000, whatever it was, was it 13 when the Royals won the World Series? I want San Diego to have this. And so now you've got your chance because there's nobody on the planet that gives you a chance in this series. And I was reading Bill Plaschke this morning in the LA Times. Plaschke's like, look, there's no rivalry between the Padres and the Dodgers. None. There's a rivalry from the Padres to the Dodgers. But there's no rivalry from the Dodgers down to the Padres. So Plaschke wrote an entire column today about here's how to gain some hatred for the Padres. Here are storylines for you Dodger fans to hate the Padres. Because there's no anger. There's no disdain. There's no threat given by the Padres. Now, if you're a Dodger fan, you hate the Giants. But if you're a Dodger fan, eh, you don't even really care about the Padres because you kind of like San Diego. It's a cute little town. You go down and you visit. But the Padres pose no threat, never have. Until today, until today, let's see what's going on with Browner because I can already see in that head of his. Look, he's cleaning out his eyes, man. He's got his hood on today. Look, let's let's see what's going on with Brown. Maybe Brown is just thinking about Devonte Adams last night. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. I'm not sure. No, I'm just I'm I'm sitting here yeah, as a me. person who's been flying the flag high all season. Yeah. Listen to this energy this morning. Nevertheless, positive, but dulled positivity, and it's okay. I get it. I'm here to tell y'all. If you scared, get a dog, big boy. Because we ain't. <laughs> we ain't. Julio Waterus, it won't matter. It could be Julio Clitoris going down tonight. Okay? Wow. Go with wow. down. That's a medical wow. term. I thought it was going to go uterus. I thought it was yeah, going to go uterus. uterus. I mean, come on. I mean, that makes a lot more yeah. sense. Medical I mean, term. my gosh. Yeah, he just term. he just used the is. I mean, come on. The U. I mean, Brown. Yeah. Jeez, man. What you mean? Because listen, 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 listen. He ain't finna dominate. We finna play around with him tonight. You see what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? Okay, I'm glad some of y'all don't know how to do that. There's classes on the weekend. I can help y'all out. Listen, Mike Clevenger has number one stuff when he's right. So I don't want to hear about this number four. We putting our guy against their guy. Is Huri is good? Of course he is. Are the Dodgers good? Of course they are. Okay? We good, too. I'm exhausted of this no chance business, okay? No chance ain't for people who get here. Because if you got here, you got a chance. So put us on the field against them. Because this is what we've been saying all season. We want this opportunity to beat them. We don't want to beat the Braves. We will if we have to. We want to beat them. Now we in a position to go and beat them. Let's go beat them starting tonight. Starting tonight. Right now. Let's go beat them. Because I want to shut all this up. To the hell with Bill Plasky. Don't nobody need no steps from you to know how to be, oh, Padre fans, this is how you get fired up against them. Shut up. We don't need you. They don't need you. Okay? You see these stands? You see these hands being thrown? You see they come down here? The rivalry is real. Y'all ain't got to say it in L.A. Because we feel it. We know when y'all come here. So we know it's real. We ain't playing no games. It's, it's tonight. 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 Let's book games. Like, well, sometimes I feel like, <laughs> like we got to, like, stop the game sometimes. <laughs> like, like, you know, you know, we let him go too long when he starts. Yeah. Singing. When he's kind of like, I've noticed that out. about yeah. Browner. Tonight. Like, he's like flames out. He's like, he starts singing. Right. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah, so we gotta, let's book Got to reel him in. Got to reel him in. Oh, yeah. That's a I classic mean, song. I mean, listen, if if the Padres were to win this game tonight, which, by the way, I'll be honest with you. They could. Yeah, but they could. 100% they could. And if they do, it would be truly incredible. 
if Mike Clevenger has number one stuff and he goes out and has the performance of his lifetime, and if you catch Julio Urias and he's not at his very best, like Scherzer was not necessarily at his very best, mm -hmm. then yeah, you oh, got Scherzer was at his best. He just got rocked. Well, I guess what I'm saying take is, that away. <laughs> is, is that if he were at his best, you know, guys like, uh, you know, Bell and uh, Grisham weren't hitting bombs, you know? Um, what I'm saying is this, though. If the Padres could win game one in Dodger Stadium, yeah, it, it might change the perception. Going into this series, everybody thinks the Dodgers will win. And particularly, everybody thinks the Dodgers will win game one tonight. Because when you just look on paper at their number one, a guy who's a real candidate for the Cy Young Award versus the Padres number four, just that by itself. If this, if this were if this were Urias versus Darvish, you'd go, okay, you got yourself a serious pitching matchup. But Clevenger, two years later, this is not considered one versus one. Now, could a great human story happen for Clevenger tonight? Sure. I mean, Joe Musgrove, this is, you know, two nights ago now, but the way he pitched and the, and, and the accusations that have flown thereafter because of the spin rate or whatever, you know, he just had a phenomenal, phenomenal, a great, great, an epic, epic, he had a great performance, dude. He went superhuman in the playoffs. That's called stepping up. You know? Um, could Clevenger yeah, do that tonight? Yeah. He could. Willie? Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Do I expect it? Not really. See? See? You don't like, see? 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 And it's cool. It's cool. We've been proving y'all all season long. We had to carry y'all to all-star break. Y'all finally kind of got on around the fringes. And then when it got to August, I was like, oh, see, they're flaming out. September come. Okay, they kind of rounding around. Okay, boom, end of September. We get on the road. We start winning two out of three, two out of three, two out of three. We go to the playoffs, two out of three. This ain't no different. This ain't no different. Ain't no intimidation. I need, I I need y'all to understand one thing, one thing only. We got a chance. That's it. That's of it. You got a chance. That's You're it. Playing a game. You're playing a game. That's it. Of course, you got a chance. We here, Ron. I've been to many it's horse races when when a when a fifty to one long shot comes in, yeah. And you're like, and you're like, that horse stands no chance at all. But they open the gates and the horses run, and the fifty to one long shot decides, hey, today's my day. That happens. Today, today Mike Clevenger is the fifty to one long shot. That's a lot. 50 to 1? I mean, you understand what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if it's do, 20 to 1 or 30 to 1. It doesn't matter. Give me I'm a just taking an example. He, he's, a, he's a big underdog. And the Padres are big underdogs tonight. That's all I'm saying. They also, I think it's, I, I think there is a, uh, I'm trying to find the right way of saying it. Go ahead. Skeptical optimism. You know? I, I, there's no one on this planet who actually believes what Brown is saying. As far as like, we're going to go out there. We're going to do things we never done for two years. You know, I'm not saying they can't, but it's going to, they're going to have to look like a different team against this team that they haven't looked like for the past two seasons. So it's a big ask. It's a big, tall order, but it's damn possible. I would say that when the Padres Dodgers concluded their season series at Petco park, and the Dodgers won the series two games to one, which they've done all season long. Because remember, they played 19 times, and the Dodgers won 14 of 19 games. Padres won five. Trying to help everybody with a little math lesson there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So at the end of that series, you remember what Bob Melvin said? He said, yep. we, we've closed the gap. Okay, yeah, the games are more competitive. And the Dodgers are still winning the series. But if you're the Padres, you didn't feel like you'd gotten blown out. You didn't feel like you were not competitive. Yeah, they've, they've closed the gap. The Padres are closer to the Dodgers today than they were at the beginning of the year. I mean, that's, but, but the numbers still say 
that the Dodgers should win. The difference right now, from my perspective, you know me, I like the human heart story part of all this kind of stuff. When the Padres finished the season, they were on their way up. They were Everything was trending upward. Remember how weeks ago I was like, Juan Soto, pretty big disappointment. And I wasn't the only person saying that. They traded for Juan Soto. He was advertised as the best hitter in baseball. And frankly, he was not even close. And then all of a sudden, Juan Soto started to come alive. And then the Padres started to win series. And then the Padres put a couple of wins together. Five wins in a row. It wasn't 10. It wasn't 12. It wasn't 14. But it was five. And then they started winning series. And then they got themselves into the postseason. And everything was trending upward. You Darvish was the pitcher of the month. Blake Snell was pitching better than he had all season. Musgrove was making a monster comeback. Everything was trending upward. While the Padres were trending upward, you know what the Dodgers were doing? They were just kind of maintaining because they had destroyed everybody and run away so long ago. They were just sort of jogging, still winning, but just kind of maintaining, just kind of jogging. That's all. No big deal. No pressure. No intensity per se. No series that is like, ooh, they got to win this one. They didn't have that. The Braves and the Mets had that. The Phillies had that because the Phillies were trying to battle their way in. The Brewers were falling apart. The Padres were clawing and scratching. But the Dodgers were chilling. So while the Padres were trending upward and the Dodgers were just maintaining, we find ourselves in a place today where the Padres, not only did they trend upward, so much so that they were able to go to New York and win that series, the Dodgers have been sitting at home. Now, maybe the rest is good for them, or maybe the lack of play is bad for them. Maybe the Padres show up today in all that intensity and all that buzz in Dodger Stadium, but they're on this high, and the Dodgers are still just sort of in maintenance mood. So that's why the Padres, in my opinion, absolutely pose a threat to the Dodgers. Doc Fred Freeman said it best, and I don't give him credit for anything, but I do give him credit for this. It's like, the Padres are coming in hot. We've been hot for seven months. Who's going to be point. hotter? Good point. Like, that's really it. Like, they're, the Padres are playing their best baseball that they've ever played coming into the series. The Dodgers have been great all season long. Yeah. They've also had five days off, but both teams are exceptionally healthy now. I think everybody's available. Um, you. Listen, Mike Clevenger, Blake Snell, to me, not much difference this year. So one of them was going to pitch this series. And now you got Darvish lined up for game two. You got Musgrove. He, I'm sure he's going to pitch game three. I'm Especially probably. Friday night at Petco Park for and sure. And then if you need Snell for game four, and then who knows, you know, who knows how it shakes out. But like the Mets series, except I said you have – like you literally have no excuses against the Mets. You just got to go out there and play. What the same thing? Like there's no excuse. Go out there and play your best baseball and see what happens. You're playing with house money. You're all in. Who cares? Look at Browner. What does that face tell me? What does that face say? Look at that face. I just, you know, look, man. Look, man. Clevenger on the season. Mm hmm. Let me go to my stat. My, my, let me go to the information nerd. department. Yeah, nerd alert here. Oh, my. Nerd, nerd, alert. nerd, nerd alert. Nerd alert. Mike Clevenger is 0-2 with a 9-6 ERA with 11 strikeouts and three appearances versus the Dodgers in his career all of 2022. Again, this is the moment for him. Like I told y'all yesterday, I'm going to repeat it here again. Soto going to win this series. This is going to be the Soto series. Just like last series, somehow magically – became uh, 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 Grissom, the Grissom series. This one going to be the Soto series. All this Ooh. complaining and we Grissom. heard about him. Last Grissom, time we saw guy. him, last time we saw him, he was slapping Edwin Diaz into left field. This mm. ain't going to be no different tonight. This ain't going to be no different tonight. That's all, man. We, 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 there really is something to be said about a team coming in with absolutely nothing to lose. They got nothing to lose. This, the best, like, this is the best they play. Like, there's literally nothing. There's nothing, no one. That can like that the Padres should come in here not playing as loose as they possibly can. Like they're gonna go to LA and be like, what is there to lose here? Like if you're if you're on that team, you're like, yeah, they've kicked our ass for two years in a row. None of that matters. 111 wins do not matter tonight. 
89 wins don't matter tonight. It, none of it. Exactly. Because right, well, you can't bring those 111 with you. Well, let's do this. Let, let, let's do this. We've, we've kind of set up where, where we're at. I mean, I think there's obviously a lot of excitement around San Diego. And by the way, I'll be in L.A. later. There's going to be a ton of excitement in L.A. as well. So uh, yeah. every, everybody stick around. That's right. L.A. Cap will be in the house tonight, you know. Um, I saw that poll. Which poll? On ESPN LA. What'd they say? Did you see that poll? No. You didn't see it yesterday? No. <laughs> no. Your your radio station's asking who you're rooting for. Yeah, they really all want me to like, you know, be like like a Charger, or excuse me, a Padre cheerleader. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but if you were listening to me all season long, you'd know how skeptical I've been. So, hey, listen, we are in the mm -hmm. Seven Mile Casino studio, sevenmilecasino.com. Let's go deeper into it. Padres, Dodgers, game one tonight in Dodger Stadium. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studios, and we're just getting going. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier1090.com. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season is almost complete. Live on Your View and YourView.com, watch your San Diego Loyal take on Sacramento Republic FC Saturday, October 15th at 7 p.m. Watch the final regular season game of the 2022 season as the San Diego Loyal prepare for the USL Championship playoffs. Sacramento Republic FC versus the San Diego Loyal, Saturday at 7 on your view. okay. I had a degree and work experience. I should be able to provide for my kids. But they're just things that you don't plan on in life. My husband got laid off and we are a family of five. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I would ask the doctors, what can I do? And they would just say, just make sure she's eating. Our lives just changed completely. Thank God that we always had a, a plate of food. When your air conditioner needs to be tuned up, repaired, or replaced, call Bill Howe, the name you have trusted for over 40 years. We carry the most reliable, energy-efficient brands that will fit your budget. Whether you are looking for a traditional or ductless air conditioning system, you know who to call. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Bill Howe. Because we know how. Do the ups and downs of the financial markets have you on a roller coaster? Don't let the market take you and your investments for a ride. Stabilize your funds with SDCCU's Great Rate Savings, Money Market, or Certificate Accounts. Choose a savings option that meets your needs and watch your money grow with SDCCU. Earn 1.5% APY on a 12-month certificate or 2.5% APY on a 36-month certificate. Open an account at sdccu.com slash now. SDCCU, it's not big bank banking, it's better. Change the way you look and feel with San Diego's most comprehensive varicose and spider vein treatment facility. San Diego Varicose Vein Treatment Center offers minimally invasive, pain-free procedures performed by board-certified cardiologist Dr. Tahizade. With over 17 years of experience, we specialize in the diagnosis of varicose veins, spider veins on the face, hands, and legs, ankle discoloration, leg swelling, and more. Improve your vein health today. Visit consultation.sdveintreatment.com or call 619-582-2404. 
This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. To all of our 1090 radio listeners throughout all of Southern California, San Diego, OC, LA, Santa Barbara, the Central Coast. Happy to have everybody tuning in. I know there's a lot of Padre fans out there that depended on this radio station forever to hear Padres baseball, especially outside of San Diego County. You will hear the Padres and the Dodgers NLDS series every game through ESPN Radio here on 1090. To everybody that's going to be watching on television tonight, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, and if you're in Orange County or L.A., it's Channel 118 on Cox on, in, on Cox or Spectrum Cable. Boy, I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> you guys all here. Um, to everybody who's with us right now on YouTube, get involved in our live chat, and everybody who's listening on different audio podcast platforms, happy you guys are all here. Hey, um, real quickly, Casey Stern is about to rejoin us. He was here on Friday. He's a big Mets fan. Browner asked him, how will the Mets fans be feeling on Monday? Casey said he thinks pretty good. I don't think that's the case. Um, we're going to talk to Casey about that in just one second. But real quick, that whole thing that happened in game three with Joe Musgrove, the whole world has decided to print some merch around it. We put out a Musgrove t-shirt yesterday on KaplanandCrew.com. And one of my favorite things that happened yesterday is Alex posted this on, um, on our Instagram account. I reposted it on my Instagram story and I got a text yesterday from Charlie Hoffman, the PGA tour player who said, bro, love the t-shirts bought two. So way to go, Charlie. I hope they get to you as soon yeah. as possible. Here they are. These are the Musgrove t-shirts and the O in Musgrove's last name replaced with his ear. There it is. It's available. Kaplan and it's not shiny out. enough. I just realized that I didn't make it shiny. Yeah. It needs to have like a little bit of, red on it you know what i mean some frank's red hot yeah, sauce exactly right all right here's casey stern you know him from his podcast unfiltered with casey stern it's like the best baseball podcast going if you're hardcore this is for you case welcome back how you doing man what's up boys how we doing okay happy monday to you or tuesday yeah tuesday um do you want to buy one of those musgrove t-shirts i like them I, I agree. It looks like the ear was taken off like the game Operation back in the 80s. <laughs> the picture of like just like like some random ear from some science project. But I like it. I dig it. It's a, it's a nice looking ear. But yeah, yeah I, I like that. I'll take a shirt. Sure. Why not? Um, so, Casey, uh, the question on Friday, how will Mets fans be feeling on Monday? Ah. Today's Tuesday. You've had a time to digest all of this. This isn't us like calling to uh, do some victory dance, but it's all right. If, I want to know that. Oh, Browner might yeah, be right. Um, but the Mets fan base, yep. what are they thinking right about now? Uh, here we go again. And some, honestly, the you know, Padre fans have felt plenty. So it's not like they don't understand the feeling. And, and certainly, you know, to go across where the football team used to be, any old San Diego Charger fans have certainly felt that plenty too who are listening. So, it, you know, when you're, when you're numb to it and you're part of a fan base where these kind of things have happened to you so very often in different ways – getting one hit in a situation like that is, is somehow not even that surprising. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not the game plan to go within two weeks from a, a lead in an Eastern division to getting swept by the Braves and then turning around after a final regular season series and going home in three days. But at the same time, I think a lot of Met fans uh, are used to it. And unfortunately, when you're this used to it, you're kind of numb to it. Hmm. Yeah. What did you think of the uh, situation in game where Showalter comes out to check on Musgrove and has the umpires wand him down like he's at a security, you know, checkpoint uh, in an airport. I, I did hear Gary Cohen, the play-by-play uh, -play voice of the Mets after the game, speaking to a crowd of Mets fans saying how embarrassing it was for the organization. I just felt it was demoralizing for the players. What did you think of that whole situation? Yeah, I don't know if it necessarily was demoralizing for the the players, but I found it embarrassing as well. I, I thought it was it was. It, look, you know, the, the timeout thing, which I think a lot of Met fans were happy about the ear check more because of, of the taking timeouts and the at-bats. I don't know how many hockey fans happen to be listening, but I actually was doing the post game way back when, I think it was might have been in 2007, uh, for MSG after the Ranger playoff game against the Devils when Sean Avery, for anybody who's a hockey fan, remembers there was a rule created about this where he was waving the stick in front of Marty Bordeaux so he couldn't see. Uh, it reminded me of that. It was kind of it was kind of you know, garbage in some ways, but it's within the rules. That's not 
in any way opening up the door to do something like this. This was Twitter induced. This is somebody from an office calling down on that phone to Buck Showalter through Twitter, through the spin rates, whatever else, and saying, hey, there's a lot of pics of shiny ears and, and let's check out what's going on. And at that point, to me, Buck's got a buffer because I do think it came from the front office. Buck's got a, because look, think about this, you know, everybody, I'm not saying, you know, don't get on Buck for this and he ate it and owned it, but he's managing a baseball game. He's not looking at Musgrove's ear on close-up shots from where he's standing. Think about the common sense of that. Somebody in the front office came down and made a phone call and asked him to do this. And to me, I think Buck ate it. Either way, the organization looked stupid. It was silly, and it was it was a garbage thing to do. I, I thought it was borderline atrocious. To be honest. Let me ask you one follow up to that. I know the guys want to jump right in, but yeah, sure. what did you think about Brian Kenny from MLB Network, who was pressed by Chris Russo? Do you think he was cheating? And Kenny, who went through all the data, and said, "Look, he, the data says he did something he's not done all season long." So then, when he was pressed and he was asked, "Well, do you think he was cheating?" Kenny, the, the face of the MLB's network, says, yes, I think Musgrove was cheating. Casey Stern, what do you think about that? Look, I, 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 don't, I don't know Brian Kenny very well, but for what I know of him, my interactions with him over the last 20 years, he seems to be a very nice guy. But he also hosts a show where they have that stupid shredder where they come out with these ridiculously asinine player rankings that make no sense half the time. So I'm not really you know, banking anything on that. Uh, as far as do I think he was cheating? No. Uh, do I understand that the spin rate show was different? Yes. Do I know for sure that that doesn't mean that he wasn't doing something different in preparation? Maybe he was just, you know, on in terms of it. It was the moment of his life. Here's a hometown kid with everything on his back trying to do it. I mean, look, there, there are a lot of times where bad pitchers, by the way, and I'm not saying he is, have great performances in one one time performances. I'll give you an example of one I covered. Josh Tomlin, who when he was pitching, if you remember him from the Indians, pitching the Braves towards the end of his career, he was as much a pitch to contact guy as there is. Those guys fail in the postseason miserably. I covered for Turner when I was doing all the pre and post for TBS. And when he was in a series in Toronto, his dad, I don't know if you remember this story nationally, but his dad was very sick. He might have just passed. And he was pitching on the emotion of that like two or three days later. And I watched him go into Toronto and help lead that team to a World Series. And it was the best start I've ever seen him pitch his whole career. There are a lot of things that aren't about cheating that help guys elevate to a different level when that moment is on. So, no, I don't think he was cheating. All right. Casey Stern, his podcast is called Unfiltered with Casey Stern. And if you're a baseball fan, you should be listening to this podcast for sure. Grande, Brown Man, you want to jump in? What was what what's the what is the overall feeling of the Mets fan base? Because I saw some stuff on Barstool and I also saw some stuff floating around how they're not I mean, they feel that they feel like they've lost the dejection, but they also feel like the Mets owner will spend whatever it takes to fix fix the thing that's been wrong. Yeah, I mean, that's dead on. I mean, look, everybody doesn't know this about Steve Cohen. I mean, he came in. Look, you understand, it, Mets fans, you know, they, the Wilpons were called the coupons in the area for a reason, <laughs> right? So, great so Met fans, Met fans dealt with that. And I got to quote one of the greats in this business ever in life, Steve Summers uh, from WFAN, who first coined that many, many years ago. But that's what Mets fans are used to, right? They're dealing with, I used to say to people, and it's no offense to Milwaukee, like, are we the Milwaukee Mets or the New York Mets? Because they used to be the New York Yankees and we would pay like we're the Milwaukee Mets. Steve Cohen went and got Lindor, went and got Scherzer. He has made the moves with money. I have said this before. I will say it again here. Otani's a year out for free agency. If you had to power rank where he's going to end up, if you are smart and you pay attention to people in the industry, they'll tell you the same thing. Number one is going to be the Mets in terms of the best chance because the Mets are going to go offer him. I don't even know how much money. And the only reason the Yankees won't get him is because Judge is going to get paid this offseason. So having deals like that back-to-back -back year is going to be difficult. So the Mets are probably, I hate to say this, a year away from getting Otani. But here's a guy like Steve Cohen who's going to go and offer a lot of money to Diaz to stay Try and keep the Grom. Brandon Nimmo, who at least one thing I told you was correct. He asked me, I think, what player to watch. And they said he was a pain in the neck. And he certainly, I thought he had probably the best ABs of any Met during the course of that series of those three games. But yeah, there is definitely a feeling that, hey, look, the Mets will fix it with money. But there shouldn't be any grace. There shouldn't be any feeling of solace. This was a disgrace. They got one hit. It's not taking any credit away from Joe Mosbro. I'm not somebody who's going to sit here and tell you he's cheating. I don't like what they did at all in terms of checking his ear. You got your asses handed to you. The trumpet shoved you know where, and you shouldn't feel good at all about that if you're a Met. Who, who shocked I'm, you the most? Who shocked you the most with their lack of apparent, with their lack of performance? 
on the Mets every on the Mets hitting staff. You know, I look. I, it's hard not to say Scherzer, right? Because we know that he gets paid and who he is. Right. But anybody who's ever watched Max, including, you know, look, and I know Padre fans have their own feelings. Look like he was coming there, right? Then he goes to Los Angeles and, and all of that. But we've all, look, I watched him pitch for the Nationals against the Mets for years. That's a dude. He's not afraid of the moment. We were all surprised to see him pitch that poorly. And that's not to take any credit away from the Padres, but that's Max Scherzer. That's That's a dude. Right. So, you know, that's not like Blake Snell, who had and I love Blake Snell, but he had the one great outing. Right. And he was taken out of too early with Kevin Cash and a lot of other kind of four and two thirds, five innings and too much of everything else. Max Scherzer, not that guy. That's the one that probably was the most disappointing. And it's why a lot of people focus on which we talked about last time we chatted last week. DeGrom not going game one. Look, DeGrom going game two instead of game one is not why they lost the series. Max Scherzer's start alone is not why they lost the series, but I would say it's probably the most disappointing performance of any Met in those three games for sure. So moving ahead, you got Padres yeah. Dodgers now. Uh, five days off is an eternity in baseball, an eternity. We're seeing, obviously, the Phillies jumped on the Braves early today. Uh, today's the game for the Padres. If they're going to jump on them unexpectedly, today's the game, right? Somebody uh, obviously follows the right people on Twitter because I had said exactly that in a video that I just put out this morning. And if you hadn't seen it, literally, you just basically retweeted what I said. Uh, I'm telling you this right now. I've been doing this for a long time. People don't understand layoffs. I was around the Rockies every day in 2007 down the stretch at the time working for MLB.com and watched that team win 21 in 22 days and then go and sweep Brandon Webb, who was brilliant, right in Arizona, wait the Red Sox World Series. And other than Matt Holiday, nobody showed up. Jim Leland had two layoffs that killed him as a Tiger manager. The second time after he swept the Yankees, he went down to Lakeland to try and get them ready and simulate things. And it still didn't matter. They got their asses handed to him both times that they got to the World Series because they won series too quickly. These five days off, setting up the pitching rotation sounds great, but bats who have not faced any live hitting and live pitching, you've got teams that are coming in off these unbelievable wins, especially the teams like the Padres and the Phillies, right, on the road and Seattle that you, you just, you're going to get ambushed early. I'll equate it this way, and this will now be randomly, but the second hockey reference I made here. But I said this to somebody the other day. A lot of times anybody watches hockey, you say, hey, we got to, when we go on the road in the playoffs, kind of handle that team for the first 10 minutes. And if we can like withstand right that buzz of them around the ice, we're good. That's the way the home teams have to feel right now is they got to withstand the first five, six innings of game one in all these series where the other team's got all the momentum. The other team has played to win. They've played game seven mode. And remember this, the last big game the Dodgers have played is when? When? Two months ago in a trumpet series against the Mets on a Sunday night game on ESPN that didn't even matter to them, mattered more to the Mets. Dodgers haven't played a big game in months. Padres have played them for weeks and are coming off basically three game sevens. It's a big momentum change. Casey Stern is here, unfiltered with Casey Stern is the podcast. But, you know, Freddie Freeman had a really interesting quote. He said, they're hot, but we've been hot for seven months. And, and every number points to the Dodgers winning the series. But what we're talking about right now, the Padres coming in hot, the Dodgers having this layoff, the Dodgers having not played meaningful games in a long time because they ran away with the division. How do you see, if you're going to handicap this series, how do you see it going? Game one. It's all about game one. It's hard not to be. I said, just to give you an idea. Now, look, I thought the Mets would win the series. When the Mets were we leading the division, I said on my podcast that the Braves would beat the Dodgers in five, thinking they would be the team that came out. When it was flip-flop, I said the Mets would beat the Dodgers in five. I'm not going to come out there and say the Padres will beat the Dodgers in five because it's hard because they have so much more of a story against each other the last couple of years, and we know which way it's gone. But I'm going to tell you for the same reason, the Dodgers are very, very, very vulnerable. Very. They have a bullpen that is mix and match. It never works in a postseason. They got Doc and, and Dave Roberts and all the guys above with way too many decisions to make of who to match up in 7, 8, 9, Kimbrell not even on the roster. They have not played a big game in forever. If the Padres win game one, they have a very good chance to win this series. But it's all mental. Because if the Dodgers, if the Dodgers shut you down tonight and win three to nothing, even though they're never going to admit it, Human element, every Padre that's in that room, every player is like, here we go again. It's not any different than it was during the regular season all these years against the Dodgers. you got to put in your own ears that you can beat this team and it's different. You win game one, it's going to feel and be very different. It's all about game one. So 
to me as the as a skeptic of the show uh everything i believe everything yeah, skeptic saying, of, which everything show? of your own show like... really <laughs> <laughs> of my uh, i'm skeptic i am the skeptic yeah. of everything on this show on this yeah show. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah on this enough, show yeah. so on this show mike clevenger julio Urias. like that's the neutralizer to everything sure. you're saying right sure so julio Urias, may- cy young maybe i mean mike clevenger second tommy john up and down Last time we saw him in the postseason, he went one inning because his arm was already falling off against the Dodgers. Uh, that's the one thing that I point at to everything you're saying is how much do you trust Mike Clevenger? You, you can't really, right? But did you have, and I haven't looked, you know, as as of, of us doing this, the, the Phillies had a pretty big lead. And Ranger Suarez, who's, you know, kind of okay. He's kind of good. He's not Wheeler or Nola either, right? And Max Fried's a dude. Max Fried's a dude. He gave up seven hits in his first 14 pitches of game one. Momentum is a big, big thing. So do I think he has a better chance, Clev, of going through the first time through the lineup and having some success because these bats haven't swung against live hitting in a big pitching in a big spot at all in a long time and any kind of live pitching in a while? I think he does. Will that give him the confidence to your point, Alex, right, to then kind of you know, build on that? I don't know. But I think he's got a better mm-hmm. chance for that team to give him a lead early. And, yeah, Urias is tough. We've seen him, look, the last three – innings of a, a to close a world series right a couple of years ago i mean he's probably gonna lose to sandy but he's gonna be close in terms of the cy young race this year but i'm telling you man momentum is weird and go back here that team i know the dodgers broke a lot of records this year but the team in 2019 you go back and look at it the dodgers were heavy heavy favorites in the national league more so than this year because there wasn't a braves team like this is that year they were supposed to coast and the nationals beat them in five games in their own home ballpark 2015, the Dodgers were heavy favorites. The Mets, with a then Jacob deGrom in his second year, beat them in game five in their own ballpark. That's two examples in just the last seven years that the heavy favorite Dodgers have lost a five-game series. We may be ready for a third here. I think a lot of people forget they were also labeled chokers for a long time because of what you're repeating. And the, and the win in 2020 kind of got that monkey off their back. But then now a lot of people consider what happened in 2020 to kind of be fugazi. So it totally depends on how you view their success as to how you kind of view this series and whether or not the overwhelming favorite can really pull through. Because people were calling Kershaw a choker. They were calling Dave Roberts a choker. Everybody was over there choking. Can we, yeah, just, look, can we just stop it, for one second and acknowledge one thing? Casey, I'm sorry. I just want to yeah, stop no, and acknowledge show. one thing real quick. <laughs> Alex, have you ever heard Browner use the word fugazi on the air? I love that, by the way. I, Little I Donnie loved Brasco, it, though. It's one of my favorite movies, by the way. I mean, yeah. come on, dude. I, I mean, he's bringing I, his postseason stuff. He's love, bringing that, that extra Brown, RPM. Yeah. Spin rate is up. What you talking about? I, I've never heard you use the word Fugazi. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just had to, to break in and stop for just one second here. Where'd that come from, Browner? My vocabulary is immaculate, okay? And if you don't believe me, check out my stand-up on the Captain the Crew Clips page. Oh, oh yeah, I see, what, uh, I see what you did, and a shameless plug. Nice yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm full of shameless <laughs> plug. Browner, Browner was full doing. Uh, Browner performed the other night, Casey, at uh, at the the uh, at the stand up. He did stand up comedy at the Comedy Store in La Jolla, oh, I know the which okay. which is yeah. one of the you know best comedy clubs. You know, they sure. got the one in Hollywood, and you got the one in La Jolla. Yeah. And Browner performed the other night, and the the video of Browner's performance is on our YouTube page now. Okay. So yes, check that out. So go check that out. It it was it was Fugazi. All right, keep going, Case. Excuse me. No, I know. I I was just gonna say. I mean, there's so much that happened there. By the way, I realized there's a picture of all four of us was up. That all of us are covering our ears, and I'm wondering if it's because we're all using some (laughs) stuff. Um, I, I just realized. Every, I just realized all of us. And by the way, we got the double, know. the hood, and the and the and then the headphones on top. So whatever yeah. the hell he's using over there, <laughs> Browner, Fugazi. Browner yeah. Yeah. Fugazi. Maybe that's why he. Speaking yeah. Fugazi. Good point. I was just gonna say, keep in mind this too. In 2020, the year they won, they trailed three one in the LCS of the Braves. They almost got there, got wiped off the field in five games in that series. Now they came back, give them credit, and then won the World Series right against Tampa. But they almost that was almost a very close to another year in the midst of all of their stories. And it's not about Doc. And how many people blame Kevin Cash oh, for that? Oh, of course, of course, Blake's of now. course. But it, it comes yeah. down to the fact that, you know, baseball night, this is not, I would say this, in covering the NBA for years with Turner, I saw this firsthand. The NBA, one or two guys can drag in. They play 48 minutes a game, right? If they have to down the stretch, you shorten the rotations, all that stuff. You can't do that in baseball. It's why anything can happen. It's why you get the Trent Grishams that you never planned for, right? It's why all of those things always kind of present themselves. 
that I, I, I've said this, and we saw it already here in game one with the Braves. All of these teams, all four of them, even Houston, who had the bye, are very vulnerable in game one. And if you give a team, and think about the upstarts, because you got Seattle, you know, they're more upstarts than, than San Diego, who regardless, I mean, they won 89 games, but everybody's talked about them all year. The Mariners and the Guardians, even though they won a division in Cleveland, nobody paying attention. Those teams have all the fire, all the momentum, and they're going to put it on in game one in these series. And no, I wouldn't be surprised if Clevenger has a little bit of an easier time first time through, and then we'll see what kind of confidence it builds him. Because bats, bats can't just, that whole we get out of bed and get two hits, it sounds great. But even for Mookie and for Freddie Freeman and the bats that they have, that first time that they get out there, all the excitement, not having an at-bat at all against live pitching in the league in a week, that's not going to be easy for them. That first time through the order, Clev might have a better chance to get through and build himself some confidence. All right, Casey Stern, Unfiltered with Casey Stern is a podcast. Casey, if you go to kaplanandcrew.com, you can get yourself one of, those, one of those oh, really cool watch the video. t-shirts. I just laugh. I just oh, yeah, watch you'll, the you'll watch the video as well. Uh, that's yeah. on our YouTube channel. Casey Stern, we'll talk to you as the playoffs go on. We're in the 7 Mile Casino studios, everybody, 7milecasino.com, and we got a lot more to get to, so stick around. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. You're watching Kaplan & Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. The Rich Eisen Show airs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. An engaging blend of insightful football expertise with an offbeat mix of humor and pop culture while continuing to attract the most recognizable names in sports and entertainment. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season is almost complete. Live on Your View and YourView.com, watch your San Diego Loyal take on Sacramento Republic FC Saturday, October 15th at 7 p.m. Watch the final regular season game of the 2022 season as the San Diego Loyal prepare for the USL Championship playoffs. Sacramento Republic FC versus the San Diego Loyal Saturday at 7 on Your View.
At the Barnes firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Well, I'm J.R. Cardenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. We're the hosts for Subida, where we showcase California restaurants, music, art, culture, and so much more. We would love to talk to you about featuring your business on our show. Yes, and as an added bonus, you get to keep the professional video segment to repurpose and use on your website or social media channels. Please click on the link below to get more information about how to put your business on Subida. Mm-hmm. We hope to hear from you soon. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Brought to you by Procopio, San Diego's largest law firm, committed to community, representing San Diegans for more than 75 years. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. San Diego Varicose Pain Treatment Center, uh, we take care of all various uh, needs of patients for management of their venous insufficiency. People who come here are mainly concerned about symptoms that brings them on or issues related to cosmetic uh, concern that uh, we can always take care of. Now with the advancement of uh, technology and so many catheter-based treatments, we can uh, treat our patients much more quickly, much more uh, comfortably with less downtime. Patients love the result invariably. It's been a huge impact in my life to, to feel better, to be able to power walk again. Overall, I'm just feeling like I used to feel when I was a lot younger, and I'm so grateful for this place. It's a privilege to take care of our patients. It comes from the heart, and I, I love it.
the way I'd, I would describe myself as a player is um, I can move around a lot. I'm very, you know, all over the field, wherever coach needs me. I'm there, I'm kind of just an all around player. Um, I'm, just, I'm just here to play. Let's go, baby! The thing I enjoy most about playing football is just being around the guys. I mean, the energy is just amazing. I just love um, coming out here and, you know, just giving all my effort and just, you know, we love to win. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned playing football is just, you know, pushing through adversity. You know, um, you know, there's always obstacles on the field. What motivates Anthony is the bar he sets for himself. When he accomplishes one thing, he pushes that bar a little higher and gets to that next level. And then when he accomplishes that, he pushes the bar a little higher and gets to that level. My name is Alejandro Eugenio Guido Perez. I play for the San Diego Loyal, and I'm a midfielder. Midfielder kind of does a little bit of everything. Attacks, defends, it helps organizes the press to win the ball back, and then defend in the low block, and then attack and create opportunities for the forwards to score and, and yourself. I started at, in, at a young age playing soccer. I did it here in Chula Vista, but I also played in Tijuana, Mexico. definitely been restorative to be back home and be at a club, such a great club, that values the person, not just the player. I've been able to grow tremendously on and off the field and be taken care of by the family that's around me and supporting me. So Southwestern College, the name of the mariachi is Mariachi Garibaldi, is the performing group that we have. We've actually had as many as four different ensembles, so four different classes, beginning, intermediate, intermediate, advanced, and um, the advanced group is outstanding. We got that associate's degree in music with the mariachi specialization approved in 2004 and that was the first in the world anywhere. It's not a degree in mariachi music, it's a degree in music with a specialty, specialization in mariachi. The ensemble is great. I mean, it ranges anywhere from 30 to 50, sometimes 60 members every semester. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Locally owned and operated, not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie-cutter radio station crap. We simply say to those stations, F*** you. The mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Hunger is a year-round problem. The San Diego Food Bank and our North County Food Bank chapter provide food assistance at locations throughout the county. We need your help. Host a food drive, volunteer, or donate online. Thank you for making a difference. Home of Guiding Hands helps San Diego community in that we're a resource for families. A lot of times when families first identify that their child, their loved one, might have an intellectual or developmental disabilities, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And we're here to help guide people through that process, to show them what a thriving life their loved one can have. Uh, it's a passion I share having uh, a daughter with a disability. I really love the place that I live at. Because of Home of Guiding Hands, I was able to move out of my parents' house and into a beautiful home that I love living in. And so like if you have an independent living service coordinator, they will help you like learn more about being independent and they help guide you through different things. They've helped me with um, lots of encouragement and love. Um, they've also given me an ILS worker who is an amazing person and I love her so much. She's great. I could tell you the first, I think, week or so, I wasn't feeling very confident in myself. The first couple of nights I was like, oh, this is scary. But I look back on it now and I'm like, this is so easy. Main Street Living celebrates diverse abilities in partnership with Home of Guiding Hands, supporting the special needs community for over 55 years. 
for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk.